All right, so it's time for our first area problem. Now, we have T-Pain, our, our wonderful friend T-Pain that will probably come up quite a bit, is laying down some dope shag carpet in his new pad. This is a big thing in the 70s, children, all right? So how many square feet of carpet should he order to fit this room? All right, and all angles that appear to be right angles are right angles in this particular problem. Okay, so, hmm, we got this weird U-shape going on here. I think he needs to change his layout, but we're dealing with what we've got. So we can actually break this up in a few different ways, and some of you might see things differently. All right, so the way I see this particular one is I see, hmm, well, if I drop this side down and this side down, I've got a 6 by 10, so 60, and over here, I'm going to have a 60 as well, okay? So one thing that I forgot to mention in this problem is that this, this would also be 6 feet here, and then this guy would also be 10, okay? So we got two 60s, and now i got to figure out what the other guy is in there. Well, hmm, what's the length of those red lines that I just drew, those red line segments? What are those? Well, I've got 6 feet, and what will make up my total of 10 feet? That's what I really got to think about here. Okay, so I got to think, hmm, six feet, what, what is going to make up the 10 feet? Well, this right here, that's going to be four feet, right? All of a sudden, down, there's going to be four feet left. So four times 14, hmm, what's that going to get me? 56, baby? I bet it will be 56. Okay. So if I add all of this up, and that's 56 feet squared or 56 square feet, um, let's see here, 60, 60 is 120, 120 plus 50 is going to be 170, so 176 feet squared of that shag carpet. Now, one thing that we'll talk about quite a bit in this class is you're going to end up wanting to order over a little bit because I don't know anybody that's ever, you know, ordered the perfect amount and had no waste when they order carpet, all right? A lot of times we'll add 10% when we're making these orders, or maybe even 20, depending on the type of projects that we're dealing with, all right? But that is the actual area and uh, the overage we can deal with later in class. All right, so ever since we decided to have this class here, Miss Kish has been talking about getting a gazebo for her backyard. So we need to figure out how much decking to order for this regular octagon base of this gazebo. As you can see, this gazebo has eight sides to it. We've got to figure out how much decking we should order for Miss Kish, right? You know, we'll get the other things later, but for now, let's talk about that decking. All right. Well, so this side length is six feet. And then it's a little tricky to see here, but it looks to me like we're basically going to have this triangle looking thing here. There's my apothem, right? That right there is 7.25. Okay, so it's a little tough to see on that drawing. I am going to bring it out here in less 3D mode, and I'm going to pop that triangle part out. I like to look at these as triangles, but I do use my formula for my regular, uh, regular polygon, all right? So my base here is 6. And this guy is 7.25. It's actually 7.24, but I found that out using some trig. Something that we'll get into in a couple units here. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and give you those numbers. 7.25 was a nicer number to work with, so I figured we'd go from there. All right, so let's talk about this in both ways, okay? So first off, if I were to use my area equals one half times the apothem times the perimeter. I'd have one half times my apothem, which is 7.25 times my perimeter. Well, if I've got eight sides and there's six apiece, that's 48. Okay? So if I plug that into my handy dandy calculator, 7.25 times, or sorry, one half times 7.25 times 48, I'm going to end up with 174 square feet of decking. Awesome. I like it. 
that works well for me. Okay? I wonder if we do the same thing but with triangles if it would work out. Well, let's see here. What's the area of one of these triangles? So the triangle area, I'm just going to do that so we know what we're talking about here. My triangle's area is going to be one-half times the 7.25 times the 6, right? One-half base times height or one-half height times base. doesn't really matter the order because, remember, it's uh, multiplication, so it is commutative, which means you can multiply them in any order. Division and subtraction do not work that way. Addition and multiplication do. So if I multiply that together, I get 21.75 for the area of one triangle. But how many triangles do I have? Well, if I multiply that by eight triangles, lo and behold, I get 174. Okay, so if I take this right here, and I find that area, and I multiply that by eight, I get the same answer that I did for this one right here, okay? This one right here is the same as multiplying this, oops, multiplying this by eight. Pretty awesome, okay? So two different ways of thinking about it. Triangles multiplied by the number of sides or the one-half times apothem times perimeter. Okay, right now we're giving you that apothem. We're giving you that base. That makes it easy. Sometimes we ain't that nice. All righty. Let's try some homework problems from packing. You know, we just did a couple examples here. You got all your formulas. Uh, you're ready to rock and roll.